All right, folks, we're gonna do a playthrough of this demo, give you my thoughts. I've already played through it multiple times, about five hours accrued. Um, it is not an uncontroversial piece of software. There are a lot of people complaining about a lot of aspects, and I actually agree with a lot of the complaints, so I'm gonna give you my thoughts here as I play through it. Jill is one of the big things that a lot of people are annoyed about. They don't like her personality. We'll see a bit of it here. She is an elite operative of RPD, Special Tactics and Rescue Service. 90s as fuck with that Russian accent. Cold War style. It's Jill. Nice to meet you, Jill. I am UBCS, platoon leader Mikhail Viktor. My team was sent here to rescue Savetli. Right. How's that going for you? The city is completely cut off, isolated. Most of the hundred thousand civilians will wind up dead. Well, correction, undead. My platoon has suffered serious losses. Just keeping them alive is more than I can manage. I don't get Carlos's haircut. I really don't. <clears throat> Fucking yes. K-pop tier. Well, we are doing all we can. Subway train moving. We can evacuate some survivors. But we need help. My men cannot do this alone. All right. I'm in. But I am on their side, not yours. Oh, hey. It's cool. We all want the same thing. <laughs> what race is he? He's got like Japanese eyes, Latino skin, we can use this to stay in contact. a black voice. I know what a radio is. I guess he's Filipino. That's what I'm. That's my bet. He's Filipino. We need to get you geared up. Head up to street level. You'll find supplies there. Why the fuck is this playing in 30 frames per second right now? Now it's not. Now it's 60. Jesus Christ! This is fraps. I hate fraps. Uh, okay, so here we are. Uh, you saw Jill's personality there a little bit. She's kind of a bitch. A lot of people are complaining about that because it's not at all in keeping with her personality uh, throughout the other games. But um, I honestly don't really have a problem with it because if you look at the context, you know, context is very important. Uh, she's interacting with Umbrella Corps mercenaries, right? She's, she's interacting with the bad guys. So it actually kind of makes sense that she would, uh, you know, not really... Sorry about that, I had to check something. Not really be friends with them, right? She wouldn't be very uh, amicable to the Umbrella Corporation. Um, so people are complaining about her. I mean, she's like, she's also like, she doesn't look much like the original Jill. Uh, she kind of looks like the movie Jill, which is probably what they were going for. Uh, but she does not look like Resident Evil 1, Jill, the remake Jill that everyone kind of loves and who was brought back in um, Resident Evil 4. Um, Working on it. So what's the plan? The old tanks now are clear the tracks. We might get the subway infrastructure back online. And how do I do that? Let's start by restoring power. I'll navigate you to the substation once you hit the main road. Copy that. Let's do this fast. But, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't really like this Jill. New Jill is kind of weird. She's not old Jill. She's not the Jill I know and love, but she did kind of grow on me over time. She did kind of... Uh, endear herself to me uh, from you know you spend most of your time looking at her behind and her haircut from behind like this and when you're when you're playing the game it does very much feel like you're playing as Jill um, it's just that the occasional personality difference or her her, her facial features just does not look like Jill that's a, that's annoying a lot of people I don't really care as much about that personally um, and like I said the whole she's a bitch thing she's interacting with Umbrella you know she's gonna be a little bit of a bitch it kind of makes sense um, so, here we go, Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil 3, now this right here, when I saw this, I was like, this is weird, what the hell are these people doing here in the cinematic, gotta get that train moving, um, 
It just it just doesn't feel very much like Resident Evil for some reason. That whole little it, that whole little sequence. Now, this is your first zombie. You'll notice right away it is you know you're you're essentially it's the same zombies from Resident Evil 2. I don't know if the torso and the clothes are a little bit different, but the head you're going to be seeing a lot of the same zombies. There might be one or two zombies in this demo that were not in the original uh, in, in two, but. Um, there's definitely most of them you recognize from Resident Evil 2, and that's a little annoying, the, the, the zombie variety, and the fact that you saw most of them in the second game. I don't know why my frame rate all of a sudden slices in half and then gets locked there like it is, I don't get it. Uh, you're probably not noticing it because the video is rendering at 30 FPS anyway, but every once in a while it goes from 60 to 30 out of nowhere. Um, this guy right here, this is where last night when I was trying to get that doll uh, one of the dolls in the demo, you have to do a perfect dodge 20 times in one playthrough to get to unlock it. So I, I went here to kind of practice my perfect dodging skills, and I managed to get 17 in a row before fucking up. At first it was really hard, but eventually, let's see if I can do it here. It's 30 FPS, it's going to fuck it up. There you go. There it is. It's so, once you understand it, you got to wait a little bit. You got to wait for the right timing, but once you get it, it's so easy. Oh, didn't get it that time. Oh, Jesus. This is gonna be embarrassing, I can already tell I'm gonna get my ass kicked. Uh, I don't even need to fuck with him. Uh, Alright, so... The first complaint that I have, that a lot of people have, is the zombies are a lot of them from Resident Evil 2. And you're gonna see a lot of similar faces. Uh, this black guy, you see him all over the place in Resident Evil 2. That cop, I think, is in the uh, break room, or the, you know, the room where you get Leon's... Uh, Pistol upgrade, uh, Claire's reload upgrade in two. You see the same cop. Um, I think the outfit might be a little different, though. The, the torso looks not exactly the same, but the head is. Um, that's a minor gripe, though, really. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, one of the things that a lot of people complain about I agree with, the game seems to be less stable than number two. Um, you know, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into when I when I loaded this up. I, I, I heard the game was in development for like a year. They announced it after Resident Evil 2 came out. And I also heard it was being made by a B team. You hear those two things, the game is being made in a year by a B team. You just know it's going to be full of jank and it's going to be less polished and it's going to have worse performance and all of those things are true. And uh, one of the examples that I want to use here, now I don't know if this is a part of the demo or if it's actually going to exist in the final game. I really, really hope this does not exist in the final game because if it does, it is indicative of just low-rent designers who don't know how to make video games properly. Watch this. When I first played this demo, this is what I did when I got here. I saw these zombies and I was like, oh, zombies. They're like, you know, sitting ducks, right? Fish in a barrel. Oh, that one died. Huh. <laughs> I never did that before. That one died. These didn't, if you'll notice. They're uh, invincible zombies. Whoa, that one died! Alright, I gotta test this out. I gotta test this out. Is this thing gonna die? I never tried this much before. It died! Okay, I'm confused. How is this going to work? I can't believe that just happened. Because watch what's about to happen. Watch what's about to happen. Watch this. Carlos, I've reached the main avenue. Which way do I go? See a big transmission tower? That's a substation. You'll have to circle around through an alley to your I can't believe those died. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. Fuck you. They're right there. See, she's a bitch. And people are like, that's not Jill, that's not her, but she's talking to the Umbrella Corps. It, it kind of makes sense that she would not be very friendly to them, you know? Gotta put this out. All right, now, I have no clue what they're going to do. All those guys are dead. All right, they're just alive now. <laughs> it's, even, it's even worse than I thought. All right, so at first I thought those things were unkillable, and I thought they were, but apparently they're not because of that. Because they're using these zombies as ga essentially gating mechanisms uh, to keep the player 
where they want them to be. So you have what I thought were invincible zombies, but apparently they're regenerating, you know, infinite live zombies. <laughs> That's so sloppy, though. That's what I'm talking about. It's not, it's not good design. It's lazy. Where you put three zombies that are randomly quasi-invincible or just come back to life, you know. Uh, which I guess is kind of appropriate for zombies, but... Using zombies. Using zombies. Things we kill. You know, staples of the, of the Resident Evil formula. Using zombies as a gating mechanism like that. It, it doesn't work. You're breaking established convention. I see zombies, I kill zombies. I thought I couldn't kill them, but apparently I can if I waste enough ammo. And once I do, they just magically pop back to life and are right where they need to be for the event. It's, it's lazy, it's sloppy, it's immersion breaking, it's sloppy. And it shows people who don't have the brains to figure out how to solve these problems that they have. Now, maybe this is just a demo thing. Maybe they just needed the player to do something for this demo. It's a small little area. They had to block off areas to get you going down the path they want you to go down for the demo. So they just kind of slap something into the game to get, it, to get the demo out. That I can accept. But if that kind of shit exists throughout the actual game, that's a problem and it will bring down the experience. Now there's another one of these kinds of things in this demo that I will show you when it comes up. Which just screams lazy, sloppy design. But we'll get to that in a minute. Now another thing... You know, just look at this guy. See how, see how uh, janky he's moving? It might be harder to tell at 30 FPS, but that guy is moving around, and she is too, actually, at much lower frame rate than everything else. Everything's running at 57, 58 right now. And those guys are running at, like, 10 frames per second. Uh, now, this happened in Resident Evil 2 as well, where when zombies were far away, they reduced the refresh rate on their animations to reduce the load, I guess, on your CPU or something. But because Resident Evil 2 is set in a building, you never really saw it that much. Every once in a while, a zombie would be far enough away where you would get this, this slideshow animation shit going on. But because Resident Evil 3 is set in a city, you tend to see uh, this shit a lot more to the point where, like, you know, half the zombies you end up killing are in this kind of situation where they're far away. You want to be far away, obviously. You want to reduce the risk to you as the player. That was terrible. Um, and they end up running around in this fucking, you know, nice slideshow mode. And it's ugly. And it's immersion breaking, and it's just less polished and gross. Now, there's some um, uh, scuttlebutt going around that, and I don't know if this is true, because I, 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 I did play the Resident Evil 2 one-shot demo, but I didn't. I didn't go in depth with it or anything, but apparently that demo locked out some of the uh, video settings uh, for whatever reason. They didn't have the f it didn't have the full suite of graphical settings, um, so maybe that's a similar situation here where um, the animation distance is is just heavily reduced for the demo, and you'll be able to crank it up in the final game. I don't know. I sincerely hope so because if that kind of problem persists throughout the game it's it's not going to be a good time and uh or at least it's going to be fun but it's not going to be it's going to definitely bring down the overall experience um and also it appears in, uh in similar keeping with the with the animation thing the gore seems to also have been tamped down a little bit um the the, the dismemberment and the shaders that they put on the body to simulate gore. Jesus Christ. Uh, it seems to be reduced in this game. You don't see as much gore, you don't see as much you know, organs and shit as you did in the original. Um, again, that could be a video setting thing where they reduced it for the demo, I don't know. But it is noticeable and it does you know, bring down the overall experience. And you know, This is not Resident Evil 2. This is the sequel. Right? So we're coming from Resident Evil 2, we're bringing in all of our expectations from that game into this one, and even if it is just for the demo, it is still noticeable and it still does you know, make you kind of annoyed to see it happen. Um, so, yeah, animations, gore, seem to be tamped down in this demo. Um, could be demo related or could be the game itself. I don't know. It's either way, it's disappointing. I, I can get all four of these guys, but it's kind of hard.
Did I get him? Yeah! All four. Is he dead? Yes. This is the, uh, this is where that, uh, bobblehead is once you do the 20 perfect dodge in the game. But I mean, you know, despite all the things I've said so far, it's still Resident Evil. It's, it, it is a B-team project. You know, it is sloppy. It is less polished. It is jankier. Um, as we've already seen. I mean, what you've seen already is far more jank than you will ever see in Resident Evil 2. And uh, if you know that going in, that it is kind of a a B team, you know, made in a year kind of almost spin off. You can you, you you know you dial in your expectations. You know you kind of you know what to expect, and it just becomes a, another great Resident Evil game. Like I said, I've put over five hours into this demo alone. Right, that's practically the length of the game. I mean, really, the game will probably not stretch more than six, seven, maybe ten hours. The absolute max if you're really taking your time and I've already put half of that into just the demo which is just this little tiny area so it's still good it's not bad it's Resident Evil it's just a it's a sloppier kind of B team Resident Evil that's exactly what it is and uh, it's far more action well not, oh, actually that's not true it's not far more action oriented it's slightly has slight more, slightly more action with the dodge mechanic um, and the nemesis himself which we'll see in a minute um, adding to that, so. Let's go over here. This frame rate is killing me right now. It's at 30 FPS. I don't understand this. It's something to do with fraps. I don't know. But then it go up to 60 again. It's like once it drops below a certain amount, it just locks itself at 30. Very reminiscent of, of Breath of the Wild, actually. Once you went to a certain point in Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, it would lock at like 25, or maybe even 20 FPS. It was ridiculous. God, I love that. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? I love that shit. So, I mean, you know, you don't really... S I mean, this is Jill. You know, you don't see much of that bitchy Jill. You don't see much of her weird face when you're playing the game. And uh, it just feels like Jill once you're playing it. It is weird, though, especially at the beginning. It's kind of jarring. She does look a lot different than the Jill I know and love. She sounds and acts a lot different than the Jill I know and love. But um, she, she grew on me after a while. Shit! Ah, Bollocks. I forgot. Well, I'll be back for you in a minute, bud. I mean, the bobbleheads in this game... There, there's 20 of them, about like like 7 or 8, maybe, maybe 10 of them are like kind of sensible, they're just kind of hidden, and then a bunch of them require these ridiculous like triggering conditions, you know, do this, kill this, go there, do this, and then it'll unlock, and it's, oh fuck, I forgot about it, and it's just ridiculous, it, it, the, the way the, the, the some of the bobbleheads, I don't, I don't, I could never in my life, I could spend 50 hours... Oh, the bobbleheads, yeah. I could spend I could spend 50 hours in this demo and never figure out how to do some of these bobbleheads. And I don't know how some of the people that I use the guides of possibly figured this out on their own. It's, it's, it's incredible to think that someone actually did. But 
some of the stuff you got to do is just look up the guide yourself if you want. I'm not going to go into detail here, but if you look up the guides for some of these bobbleheads, like you got to do ridiculous things that I can't believe anyone would figure out on their own. Um, I like that she has a Glock. I like this Glock a lot. Very Half-Life tier. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker! Oh, God! Fuck you. Let's make sure you're dead. I don't trust your ass. Uh, zombies, well, I'm playing in standard right now. I play I play the games in hardcore mode, so I don't know how they'll be in hardcore, but in this game, they seem a lot easier to kill. Um, and they seem... It's, it's, it just seems like it's easier to know when they're dead. Either it's much more reliable. To t you can have a much more reliable uh, ability to tell when, when zombies are actually down for good. Totally ruins the aesthetic of the Glock, but, you know, it's an upgrade. I mean, that just looks so much grosser compared to the Glock without it. The Glock is just such a beautiful weapon to me. I don't know why I like it. It's, it's, I like this, it's almost, I don't know. It's a square slide. I don't know what it is, but I love Glocks. But that's, that's the sight on it. Just looks gross. <clears throat> I think it makes your, yeah, it makes your reticles shrink quicker, get better critical hits. But you can see here, you know, it's the level design is pretty good. It's um, if, in case you're not aware, you probably aren't because you haven't played this before. But this is where I this is this wraps around to where I was before with the donut shop and and everything. So the level design, you know, it's got that Resident Evil. I was going to say Dark Souls thing, but Resident Evil did it first. Although technically, I guess Metroid did it first. But that Metroidvania thing where the levels all kind of wrap back onto themselves and stuff. Love that shit. And this game, based on this demo, seems to have it. I'm very happy about that, actually. Um, the level design in this demo alone is, is solid. I like the explosive barrels as another layer of strategy to combat. Fuck. Shortcuts, Dark Souls style. Here we are. Right back where we were. Those uh, terrible gatekeeping things. I'm going to have to come back here. God damn it. I don't even need it, honestly. There's a <clears throat> first aid spray right over there, but I don't need it. So I'm not going to go back and get it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. All right, I'll take it. Okay. 
I'm gonna wrap this demo up here. So I mean, it's good, but it is a B team Resident Evil 2 spin-off sequel. You know, if you know that going in, you'll understand that it's gonna be jankier, it's gonna be less polished, um, it's gonna be probably less optimized, you know, it's gonna perform worse. Um, it's going to have certain elements that are sloppy and, and just don't really make much sense. Um, like those gating guys in the beginning. And I will show you, there's another example of gating in this game that is so, I hate it. it, it it's so bad. And to the point, it's so bad and it's so sloppy and it's so ham-fisted that it, it's to the point where people are actually on the forums, on like the Steam forums and stuff, complaining, thinking it's a bug. It's so, it's so, it so cuts against established conventions for the Resident Evil series that the players experiencing it are like, this doesn't make sense. Why is this happening? Is this a bug? And if you have something like that happening in your game, it's not a good thing. It's not a good sign. It shows that you, you made an error somewhere. And um, we'll, we'll see that in a minute. I don't know why I did that. Is that a habit? Oh, that's right. Okay. Much harder to get headshots. Much harder to get those things popping. And also the pops, the head pops in this game are not as satisfying. You didn't see a lot in this run, actually. I think I only had one. But the head pops, they, they, they're, they don't, oh, <laughs> they don't sound as, uh, not as satisfying, just not as satisfying, you know, they don't sound as satisfying, I'm sorry. All right, now here we go, this right here. Now this right here. In, happens in Resident Evil 2 and in Resident Evil 1 Remake, actually, and in this game as well. Zombies can break through doors. And this is this is the animation that plays before they bust, burst through the door after a few seconds. However, this is not an actual zombie trying to break through the door. It is a gating mechanism. Again, when I picked up the fire hose, what that does is it triggers the nemesis to spawn. And they don't want you to go certain places because they want you to spawn the nemesis in a certain location. So they do this, where one of the method means of egress, ways to get out of the area, would screw up their plans, so they simply block it off. And how do they do it? This is how they do it. This is how they decided to do it. By having an infinitely looping, door-breaking animation that never actually happens. So you go on the Steam forums, for example, and you'll see people saying, is this a bug? Am I glitched? I can't go through this door? Because that's what a human being would expect when they see something that is part of the game formula, the door jiggling that eventually a zombie bursts through, but it's infinite because they just don't want you to be able to go through the door. Now that is ridiculous. And if this kind of stuff exists in the main game, if this, kind, if this actually happens in the main game, and if that other gating thing happens in the main game, that is not a good sign for the game because it shows that the people who designed the game are so st stupid, lazy, I don't know what the word is, sloppy, just low grade, that they couldn't have figured out a better solution. Now, I'm not going to pull one out of my ass right now, but if I was being paid to figure out how to solve the problem of how do we stop people from going through this door, I could come up with a better solution than this shit. And I could come up with a better solution than that other problem than seemingly invincible zombies that don't that don't react to your shots like that's that's just lazy and like i said it's not just lazy it actually conflicts with the player it conflicts with the established conventions of the game that we know and we expect so the player is actually so confused by your ham-fisted solution to this problem that they're actually thinking it's a bug that's not a good sign that's not a good sign for the the chops of the people who made the game and if that kind of stuff persists throughout the game, the, the official real game, that's a bad sign in my opinion. That being said, even if that kind of stuff is there, and even if the game is a serious downgrade, it's still going to be good. It's still going to be good. This, like I said, I put five hours into this demo. 
I still enjoyed the fuck out of it, uh, you know, despite the problems that it did have. Um, so I'm really enjoying it, but uh, we're about to wrap it up here in a minute. Just in case, probably won't need it, but just in case. Now, <laughs> the nemesis. <laughs> this is one of the most controversial aspects of this game so far, is the nemesis, because he's both terrifying and ridiculous all at once. Um, what you just saw there was... What you just saw there was a, a good way to cheese him with that grenade. Oh, Jesus Christ! Where the fuck did he come from? <laughs> oh my god, here he is. I'm fucked. Oh god, I'm fucked. Oh fuck, I'm fucked. Ugh. He's just... I mean, that might seem lame, because I hit him with that grenade and he just cheesed like that, but... He's pretty scary. He's pretty terrifying. Um, I'll try not to die. I'll try to, I'll try to interact with him a little bit here. Try to get these dolls. I spent like four hours trying to get these dolls. You you learn a lot about the nemesis. And it becomes much less scary. Um, but he is still pretty fucking terrifying uh, when you're running from him. You hear his footsteps bearing down on you. Although, <laughs> hopefully, I can get a shot of his running animation in this. It looks terrible. It looks terrible. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, that's not it. That's <laughs> a little. Oh Jesus. Dead. Fuck. Yo, is that guy still alive? I thought I shot him with that grenade, or hit him with that grenade. Now, you saw that, uh, that janky-ass frame rate in that animation? Bitch! I, I want to see- I just think his running animation is fucking ridiculous. It just looks ridiculous. And it doesn't even look like it's- I don't know if it can, if it's if it's even worse than that sometimes. Like where his arms are just ridiculous, going flailing like crazy. He just like, <laughs> it's like a it's like a borderline Naruto run almost. Like his arms are going nuts, and I guess it makes sense a guy that big he'd have to stabilize himself like that. But it's just funny. It's just funny seeing him run. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Jesus! Oh yeah, I want to show you some sloppy right here. This this shit right here is ridiculous. Watch this. If I can get him to spawn again, he should come. Yeah, there he is. Oh Jesus! God damn it! Oh fuck! Why is it still scary? I fucking played this demo like for ever. <laughs> I'm still scared of it. Fuck you! All right, let's see what happens here. Watch this. God damn it! With that running, right there. He fucking Spider-Man's out with nothing to grab onto. It's ridiculous. It it looks so lame. It's so sloppy. It's so weak. It's so lazy. As I said, it's like a lazy solution. Oh fuck! No fucking die. 
Sometimes the dodging works and sometimes it doesn't. That could just be me. Like I said, on that other zombie, I got 17 in a row before I fucked up, so... I think it's a little different for Nemesis than it is for the regular zombies. It's a little harder to, to, to time the window properly. Alright, I'm gonna end this. He's still alive. I don't get it. He should be dead. So yeah, that's Resident Evil 3 demo. Um, it's good. It's Resident. It's more Resident Evil 2. I mean, that's you know, it's more Resident Evil 2. It's slightly jankier, slightly less polished, but you know, it's exactly what we all wanted from Resident Evil 2, which was like more of it. Like as much as I love Resident Evil 2. It is a game that can be beaten in two hours, if, if you're really quick with it. So, as much as I love it, and I did put 100 hours into Resident Evil 2... Now look at this, this is also kind of goofy right here. This just, to me, looks goofy. Isn't that weird? It's just silly. It just seems silly to me um, that she's doing that. It's also vaguely sexual, I don't know why. Um, but, you know, Resident Evil 2, as great of a game as that is, you do wish there was more of it. And we, as I personally really wish there was like an expansion, you know, more just DLC that really added more of the Resident Evil content. Because all those like side uh, survivor special mission things, those aren't really more Resident Evil. That's more speed running stuff. It doesn't, it's not really the Resident Evil formula. So I wanted more Resident Evil 2. And this seems to be it. This really does seem to be it. Made by a B team, jankier, less polished, but it does seem to be more Resident Evil 2. Um, however, I don't think it should be priced at $60. Based on what I've experienced so far, with the janky animations, the frame rate issues, the, 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 the just unpolished nature of the experience compared to the original, it doesn't seem like it should be $60. It seems like this game should be like $40. Now, if the game, if the campaign itself turns out to be really long and really good and really expansive, plus it's got that cool new multiplayer mode on top of it, maybe it could justify 60 But right now, based on what I'm playing, it feels like a not a fully AAA game like Resident Evil 2. It, feels, it doesn't feel like a double-A game, but it feels like maybe like a, a two-and-a-half-A game, I guess. It's like it's in between double and triple-A. And as a result, $60 just feels like a little bit of a burn. But the final product might justify itself. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But... Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. This is the end of the demo. Now that animation was a perfect example. Stars. His mouth flapped like a weirdo. It didn't look good, right? The nemesis himself looks a little weird, and his animations look a little off. His running animation is stiff and strange and borderline goofy. The way his mouth just opened, it just looked goofy. It looks janky. It just looked janky. And that's because the game doesn't have as high a budget as 2. It doesn't have the same team as 2. And it seems like they threw a lot of their budget into the fucking actors. Because the actors seem pretty good. And the animations on the actors seem pretty good, so the facial animations and stuff. It seems like they put a lot of their budget into that. And they skimped on the development budget. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. This is a demo. Like I said, a lot of the graphical settings might have been gimped for the demo. So maybe that frame rate shit with the distant zombies will be better in the game, in the main game. Maybe those gating kerfuffles will be fixed in the main game. I don't know. But what I do know is... It's janky... And it is a downgrade from Resident Evil 2. However, it's still probably going to be really good. It's, it's, it really is it really is kind of like the Dark Souls 2 of the Resident Evil situation here. Because Dark Souls 2 was made by a B-team after this, the massive success of Dark Souls 1. A B-team made Dark Souls 2 while the A-team was working on Bloodborne. I don't know what the A-team is working on right now. Maybe Resident Evil 8. I don't know. Although I, I thought Resident Evil 8 has been in development forever while Resident Evil 2 is in development, so I don't know who's working on Resident Evil 8. But the team that made Resident Evil 2 is apparently doing something right now. Maybe they're taking a break or taking a year off. I don't know, a couple years off. I don't know. Um, but this does very much seem to be a very kind of Dark Souls 2-like thing, where you have kind of a janky B-team spinoff being released after the 
massive success of the original, quote unquote. Um, but once again, Dark Souls 2, as shit as that game is compared to all the other Souls games, and it is, it's terrible compared to all the other Souls games, it's still better than most games. It's still a Dark Souls game. So I think you're going to have a similar situation here with Resident Evil 2, uh, 3. Is It's going to be maybe shitty compared to Resident Evil 2, but it's still going to be really good. And it's still going to be maybe worth 60 but so far, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, whatever. Uh, tune, into the, tune into the next one. Uh, uh, until next time.